Hey, hello everyone and welcome to the VAWBRC Foundation Oral History Project. The goal of this project is to capture and preserve significant events and their associated stories from the VAWBRC community's illustrious history and to make them available to the community and the public at large. I'm Joe McNamara from the VAWBRC Foundation and it is my pleasure and honor today to introduce today's interviewee, Boreas Burkhart. Today's interview is a slight departure from our usual ones because Boreas is not a retired Navy flag officer, commanding officer, or test pilot, but a German citizen who has a passion for the VRC community. I also want to mention that we are sitting now in the ATO space on the USS Midway. I'm wearing my docent gear today as a Midway docent, and I want to congratulate and call attention to the work of Ken Borchik of the VW VRC Foundation who, with his dedicated band of volunteers, put together this really wonderful space that will be soon part of the VW, or rather the Midway um, tour routing. It really is a fantastic space, and anybody who, who comes here is going to really, be, really enjoy seeing this. So, Boreas, I think everyone is interested in, in you and why you are so interested in the C-2 aircraft. But first, before we get into that, just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got here. Thank you for the invitation and for the interview here today. Yes, uh, my name is Boris Burkhardt. I'm from Germany, originally born and raised in Stuttgart. Very familiar to many of the VRC and VAW guys out there. And living at the present time in the middle of Germany in the city of Göttingen. Um, I'm uh, from Degree electrical engineer and also in financial I have a degree and since I worked in the automotive industries I also had the Lean Six Sigma black belt and so on you know qualification like it's expected to have it today so um, I worked many years for Mercedes and was there responsible for the tube and pipe shop with 180 employees so I was buying machines technology so I had a great time there and uh, then I met my wife, so I moved to Göttingen, so I left Mercedes to another job, so I was self-employed for a while uh, with consulting and selling machines. And then later on I was um, as project lead for Audi, responsible for the uh, back of the Avant car, mm -hmm. so the trunk, so I made all the crash test body cars for R6 and A6. So I really signed, it was my sign, proved you can go on the street because we put on the, you know, all the luggage in the back, made a crash, and then the, all the luggage came to the front seats and so on, and the, all the safety net held all the luggage back. So that was my responsibility. So I worked there for a while, and we moved back and forth, back to Stuttgart, and then my wife said, oh, she'd like to go back to where she came from, Göttingen, so moved up there. And there uh, I got a new job as engineer and project lead for prosthetics. So today mm. I'm responsible for new feet or legs and prosthetics for amputees. Mm. So there's a huge German company all over the world. They have their product. You even see here with the veterans, they get our product as well. Oh. Yeah, so it's great to do such kind of job. Wow, that is so interesting. Yeah, so a quiet variation yes. all my lifetime. <laughs> But now the question that everyone is, is so interested in is, in all the spectrum of military aviation, why did you find the C-2 such an interesting aircraft? Yeah, that's a limited story, but I hope to make it short. First of all, I came out from model train stuff, and I thought, you know, make always the straight things. No, I don't make that. I want more interesting stuff. So. When I was younger, I lived near Stuttgart Airport, so I have seen a lot of aircrafts coming in, so I thought I want to make an airplane. So a good question is, which airplane? So it has to be flying in and out of Stuttgart. That's the major thing. And then it must be a propeller prop. To be honest, I don't like jets. You know, there are many guys out there, like the Blue Angels and all the fighters, you know? No, I like the props. So. We have the props and then 
maybe planes. They're so shiny, you know, white, shiny. So they look clean, not dirty, you know, with the camouflage. So no, maybe. And then I found out, yeah, in Stuttgart, we have Navy coming in. We had C2, we had even E2, S3 coming to Stuttgart. But the C2, hey, that was a, a great plane, you know, interesting. First of all, folding wings. Then four tails were only, or stabilizers were only three are working. Hey, okay, what's that? You know, I got four, only three working. Open ram during flight. That's great. And, you know, you go in the carrier. You know, you have the trap, you have the cat. Awesome. And I thought, this is cool aircraft. And the next thing what happened is I looked to the date. And so we have um, the first flight of the C2 in 1964. And there it is. I'm born in 1964. So you see, there's a lot of things uh, why I choose the the C2. And quite often people ask me the same question, you know, why? And on the other side, I said always, yeah, how you pick your wife, you know? So, <laughs> so yeah, it's, there's no explanation. So there's, you know, even you fell in love or not. Yeah. And that's why I like the C2. Yeah. Now you say you saw a lot of military aircraft in Stuttgart. Why is that? Uh, Stuttgart, it's European headquarter command. There's the AFCOM. There's the Navy SEALs up there, yeah, and Stuttgart was a Stuttgart Air Base. We had even many times we had the, the Army there. We had a lot of, I think, 16 or 20 um, Mohawks there based in the early days. Daily uh, flights out of Siganella to Stuttgart. Mm -hmm. And big Navy is also in Stuttgart, you know, surprised. It's not Naples, it's not a sea, it's Stuttgart, but I think all because of the AFCOM and UCOM. That's why the Navy is there. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, they still have a Navy ball in Stuttgart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Should go to that. Okay, so we understand you had quite a day yesterday. Can you tell us of your impressions of seeing VRC 30 and also getting to fly out to the ship? Yeah, I will do so. But let me start with my journey. So this is this was a week of C2 journey. So I came in, come over from Stutt uh, from Frankfurt to Norfolk first. So I was up at Norfolk with the guys at VRC 40. So at the Raw Heights. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. So to be honest, I got my first flight with a C2 in a C2 of the Raw Heights. So, and first of all, I said, you know, we have a chance, you have a chance to go to simulators. But when I showed up at the base, I said, you know, we have today a reenlistment on the Hudson River, over the Hudson River. So if you like, you can come. So I said, hey, no doubt. Better the real C2 instead of the simulator. So we were had a, a nice flight along the Hudson River, you know, with reenlistment during the flight. So it was my first C2 flight. It was great. Yeah. Wow. And then I come over here from Norfolk flying to San Diego. And um, interesting is also for many years, I know peoples and pilots from the VRC-30. And especially, surprisingly, the XO, the recent actual XO of the, C, of the VRC-30, because he served in Stuttgart as well. Uh -huh. And we found out his daughter and I went to the same, same school. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. there's a really big connection always to the uh, VRC and VAW uh -huh. over Stuttgart. And that, yeah, and they made it possible yesterday that I have a flight out of the to the Nimitz. So I got my first trap yesterday mm -hmm. and I got my first cat. Yeah. And I got my whole back fitting. Yeah. yeah. So it was absolutely great. So gorgeous. One thing I have to say it's I thought the cat was stronger. So I was prepared for the worst. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, but it was okay. Yeah. You thought it would be stronger. Yeah. Right? So, but you know, I listened. I have contact with to a lot of VRC fifty people. They had the hydraulic catapult back then in the Bennington or mm -hmm. other aircraft carriers, and they said it was really wow, really strong. So mm -hmm. I was prepared really for a really strong <laughs> catapult. So yeah, it was it was great. So I, <laughs> and I have to say thank you, especially thank you for, to the VRC thirty for the skipper. For sunshine, 
and also for the XO to make the things possible to have my first trap and cat with the C2. So you see a great week and now here with you in the AT room. Yeah. Mm. It's almost like a dream come true for you, all these things that came together. Yeah, I'm lucky that, I was lucky that at le least right now we have the limits out there. So um, yeah, and I'm very thankful for all the supports of the VRC40 and as well as the VRC30. Yeah. Now, not only are you fascinated, have a passion for the C2 aircraft, you actually wrote a book about it. Would you like to describe what, what what's about your book? And yes. The thing is, as I mentioned earlier, I want to make a plane, a model plane, not a, the small stuff, you know, a big, big plane. So always when I do something, maybe that's a German style, you know, going into a study, doing precise information, doing measuring, whatever, you know. So I looked into details, materials, and I said, while I'm making this, I want to have a book. So I made this book here. So I was collecting data, information, um, made it by myself, right, wrote by myself with DTP, and even uh, print out by my own. So it was self-published, huh. the book. And over the years, I was collecting slides and information about the different squadrons. So you see a lot of pictures inside from we are 24, we even we are 30, we are C30, VX20, we have the VAW120, the Firebirds, the uh, 110 Firebirds, 120 Greyhawks. Oh, I see an arrow in my book. So, uh, <laughs> things happen, you know. And we are 24 lifting eagles, you know, out of Higanella. So, and I have to say this, and it's very true. In the beginning, it was the plane, but more and more, I doing the book, I learned what the people are doing behind this, you know, with the C2, you know, the community. First of all, you see the, the, the aircraft, then you see the pilots, and then you see the airmen, you know, sitting in the back for how many hours? Only two windows, that's it. And on the other side, all the maintainers, especially to, in these days, you know, keep this bird running. If you, I mentioned earlier, the first flight was 1964. The Reprocute version came out in 1985. So, wow. Still flying. They're still flying. And they stay flying on a daily base. Isn't it amazing? So, it's what these guys are doing is really great. Yeah. So, yeah, and I wrote a book. So, I collected information and I tried to show the C2 with my eyes. It means show the squadrons, history of the squadrons, going a little bit in history of the trader, the first C2, uh, C1, and then the C2, and also have for the model modellers, you know, details of, the, uh, of parts, of wheels, of wings, whatever. And interesting is that the most people are not aware that C2 have different paint shapes over the year. Very interesting paint shape. So I also, you will find all the information here in the book. Well, the, uh, the VAW VRC Foundation is a nonprofit organization that we do not endorse or solicit for other products, but we will ask how could someone get a copy of your book if they were so interested? Yeah. So I do have a website on it called c2greyhound.com and also very easy c2 greyhound at facebook at twitter and at, at instagram it's always c2 greyhound so easy to find yeah so far it's a self-published in a very limited version but i really would like to do a bigger version you know and i will even print it here somewhere in the us you know yeah so i'm going to wrap it up to, by saying that you know those of us who serve or are serving uh we know what we do and we appreciate the people that we work with, but to see someone like you coming from, from a whole different place to similarly appreciate and really get what this mission is, it's very inspiring to us and it, it means a lot. So thank you, Boris, for coming out and for, for doing all you've done for, for yeah. us. Yeah, and I have to say thank you for the foundation, especially today. Uh, I became a lifetime member, so thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yes, we do too. Thank yes, and let me say one thing that's very important. It's 
we have to collect history. And I won't reach, really want to reach out to you out there who see this video. If you have material, you know, share your material with the foundation, with me, whatever. We need to keep history alive. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's gone. We have to send down here with the C2 of the VRC30 next year. Mm -hmm. They will get replaced by the Osprey. So if we don't keep history, we've forgotten. So keep things coming. I don't think we could have said it any better ourselves. Gordius, thank you again for showing up and for all you've done. And it's been a real pleasure to meet you and talk to you today. It was my pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.